I am Melania, Blade of Mikola. And I have never known diff... Gentlemen and darnest of all ages, we all know that bleed builds are a commonplace thing in Elden Ring. Rivers of blood on every corner, arcane being a well-loved attribute. But what if I told you that you could join in on the fun of the bleed status without having to adhere to the boring meta of swinging katanas around? No offense to sword players, but well, I'm a train. Choo-choo! So anything is boring in comparison. This build was born entirely of one concept. Bleed is good. Blood Flame is a status that applies bleed over time. It isn't affected by arcane scaling and is instead only affected by how fast you can apply the ticks. And so a concept was born. What is the fastest way to apply Blood Flame ticks? Well, power stancing daggers is pretty good, you know, but then you have to power stance daggers. Ew. What if instead you could hold a big, meaty, pointy stick, slam it into the floor, and charge forward through bloody fire, repeatedly applying the bleed debuff to your foes until they die? As a result of how we do this as well, this build has a lot of fun synergies going on too. While this doesn't work equally effectively on every single boss in the game, anything that can bleed will have a rough time against it. As you can easily see, the build applies consistently two to three bleeds in your first full length charge. For up to 45% of their health and damage from bleeds alone. As bleeds are health percentage based, the actual damage number will depend on your target and so does the effectiveness of the build. That said, the downward slam is a meaty impact and the upward pop at the end is actually really strong as it is affected by a number of parts of our build to make it as such. As a result, while on the average enemy, the charge is something that you can just pull out at the start and in moments of downtime to get some extra bleeds, while otherwise playing it like a normal colossal weapon, Weapon, on any enemy that happens to have particularly low poise or anything that struggles to hit right in front of it, you just absolutely destroy it in a handful of charges. Minimal effort, minimal button presses, minimal danger. No, it's not perfect, but it's fucking hilarious and it is surprisingly good for what it is too. It's worth noting any of the earlier game bosses that you see here were done in New Game Plus, but I did of course do Melania and Maliketh to show you how it handles some proper late game fights. In PvP, it's incredible for all of the reasons that you might imagine, and it's also terrible for the reasons you might think as well. The wind up on the slam is very long, but it does a lot of damage if it hits. The charge is actually pretty hard to dodge unless you know what you're doing, but if you do know what you're doing, it's easy to dodge. So if they don't dodge towards you and through you, they will get stuck on the end of the weapon, having bleeds applied and applied and applied until you release the upward swing to finish them off. Essentially, if you catch them with the charge, they die. If you don't, you do still have a blood flame laden colossal weapon to swing around, so yeah, it's still pretty good. How is the whole thing constructed then? What makes it all tick? And then afterwards, where can you get each piece for yourself, followed by which attributes should you have while using it? First things first, we have the weapon itself, Great Stars. The reason that we use this is that it can have the Ash of War applied to it, it can have Blood Flame Blade applied to it, and it also has the passive effect of returning health on hit, and of course, Prelate's Charge, little tiny tick during the charge itself count for that too, so you actually heal an insane amount while doing this charge on enemies. Then we have Blood Flame Blade, the incantation which puts Blood Flame on our weapon. This causes 40 bleed to build up over a couple of seconds, stacking with multiple applications. So if you hit someone twice in a row, they will build up 80 bleed debuff over time. This allows Prelate's Charge to do the big nasty here of just applying Blood Flame back to back to back to back to back until the enemy bleeds, and then continuing to apply it until 
held and they bleed again immediately afterwards. To really take advantage of this, we are of course using the White Mask Helmet, which gives you a 10% attack power bonus for 20 seconds after a bleed occurs, as well as the Lord of Blood's Exaltation Talisman, which gives you a 20% attack power bonus for 20 seconds after a bleed occurs as well. As well, to take significant advantage of the speed of the hits, we use Rotten Winged Insignia, which boosts your damage significantly with successive hits to an enemy within a short period of time. Essentially, what we are doing here is starting the charge with a big slam, popping multiple bleeds to make our White Mask and Blood Lord's Exaltation Talisman buff us, then multiple ticks of Prelate's Charge, activate the Rotten Winged Insignia attack power buff as well, and then the final hit of the charge goes to the fucking moon. Pair that with Golden Vow, an incantation to just buff all the damage that you do by 15% for 80 seconds, as well as the real special sauce here when you do use it, the Iron Jar Aromatic. This item raises your poise a ridiculous amount, as well as reducing incoming damage at the cost of reducing your movement speed to nearly nothing. Of course, if you can, oh, I don't know, charge for 10 seconds without stopping before your stamina bar is empty, maybe that isn't quite so big of a deal, is it? As a result, against any enemy that the Iron Jar won't kill you to use, because obviously having too much poise can be dangerous, Iron Jar is ridiculously effective as a combo with all of this. In the situations where Iron Jar is too dangerous though, you can instead use Flame Grant Me Strength, with boosts are physical and fire damage by 20% each for 30 seconds, both of which we're using. These two effects cannot be applied at the same time, so you have to decide for yourself which one is right for which encounter. Of course, we also have the Shard of Alexander Talisman on, and this just boosts the damage of weapon skills by 15%. As well, we are also using the Green Turtle Talisman to boost our stamina regeneration, as this whole build is focused around stamina above all else. The fun part of that, of course, is that we have a ton of endurance, and therefore we can use literally the heaviest armor in the game if we want in our non-helmet slots, just by the default concepts of the build. The Wonders Physic Flask mixtures, as a result, are also both stamina-based, being the Green Burst and Green Spill tier, in order to raise your maximum stamina and increase the regeneration speed of your stamina further, respectively. The result of this is a freight train of bleed damage. You are nigh unstoppable. You can apply bleeds in an instant, multiple in an instant, and doing so buffs your regular hit damage as well, which is pretty damn respectable in itself. Finally, for the seal, we use the claw mark seal because this build focuses strength over faith, though it doesn't have a whole lot of an effect on any of the three incantations that we use, so much as it would for you if you personally added more spells on for your personal version of the build after the fact. With all of that, let's talk about how to actually get all of these bits and pieces. Great Stars itself comes from the north of the Altus Plateau, in a carriage being pulled to the east of the Bridge of Iniquity Site of Grace. As well, it's worth noting that we have this weapon set to heavy scaling to make it scale a bit better with our strength attribute. The Prelate's Charge Ash of War is dropped by a beetle hanging from a tree. You can get to it from the Guardian's Grave Post Site of Grace by crossing the chain and then looking up above you. The Clawmark Seal comes from giving a death route to Garank, the Beast Clergyman and the Bestial Sanctum in Kaled. You can get your first one quite easily from the boss of Summon Water Village in Limgrave. And to get the rest, check out our video on the Beast Incantations linked down below. The Blood Flame Blade Incantation comes just northwest of the Rose Church in the Liurnia region from a beetle that you can find in the water. The White Mask Helmet comes from the Mogwin Palace region. This must be acquired before you kill Mog himself. Just head down to the side of the Blood Lake that you can see from the Palace Approach Ledge Road, Site of Grace, and you'll get a handful of invasions, the one closest to the side, giving you the armor set as a whole. The Lord of Blood's Exaltation Talisman comes from the boss at the end of the Dell Catacombs Dungeon, which is accessed through the secondary path in the sewers under Dell. The Rotten Winged Sword Insignia Talisman can be acquired at the end of the Millicent questline for choosing the Assist ending. For information on the steps to that, check out the final section of the Talisman video linked down below, as it is unlocked the same way as the Flux Canvas Talisman. The Green Turtle Talisman is picked up from a chest behind a Stone Sword Key door in Summon Water Village in Limgrave. The Shard of Alexander Talisman comes from the Alexander questline. Once you have defeated General Radon, go to his Site of Grace and you'll find Alexander there. Talk to him and he will move to the Seethe Water Terminus Site of Grace, just around the corner over in the Pool of Magma guarded by a boss. After talking to him there, he will move to the Crumbling Faramazula region, from the Dragon Temple Lift Site of Grace, head out past the enemies, up the stairs, and then jump over some crumbling runes to find him, fight him, and then take his innards for use as a power-up. The Golden Vow Incantation comes from a corpse in the Corpse Stench Shack on the east side of Mount Gelmir. Flame Grant Me Strength is behind Fort Gale in Kaled, nestled in between a couple of German fire trucks. The Greenspill Crystal Tear comes from the boss at the Minor Air Tree on the eastern side of Limgrave, 
And then finally, the Green Burst Crystal tier comes from the boss at the Minor Air Tree in the north of Kaled. And that is everything you need to make it work properly. So what should you aspire to be in order to wield it correctly? Well, my advice is getting to 40 Vigor, 20 Mind, 50 Endurance, which is the soft cap for stamina, 40 Strength, 12 Dexterity, which is the minimum to wield the weapon, 25 Faith, and 10 Arcane to use all of the incantations. From here, any further levels should be split between Vigor and Strength, depending on whether you want more damage or more survivability. Personally, I like a good mix of the two right in the middle. And that just about covers it, everyone. A way to apply bleed without arcane. A way to hit a billion times while only pressing a button once. A way to absolutely shove Melania in a corner and make her rethink every individual moment of her life that has led to this moment. The Blood Flame Train Build. Chew fucking chew. I've been Cotton Dinosaur from Rage Gaming Videos. Let me know if you enjoyed this build, if it's inspired you at all, or what other crazy combos you think that we should mess around with in the future. Like if you like the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye